Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to read and write CSV files for Pascal. This is something that may well come up in the exam for Comp 1 this year because in the 2014 pre-release what they're doing is they're using a lot of text files and they're doing these particularly well. Uh, so the alternative, because we have two different data types, is to then save all of this data into a CSV file. What I've done here is I've created just an example um, in Lazarus and this example doesn't actually use the pre-release. What it's doing is it's just showing you an example of how to write to a text file and how to read to it. Now the first thing, if you look at the variables over here, um, I've got variables to write and variables to read. Now I've split those up so it's just easier to read um, and work out what exactly what we're doing. Uh, now we've got some string variables. Uh, we have user file, which is a text variable, which actually allows us to manipulate our file um, and also add row. And add row is just a single character, which allows us to add more than one record to our file. So if we scroll down to the actual code, which is here, what I've done here is I've used system dot assign. Now system dot assign says to the program, um, I want to use this particular file um, for this process. Um, now assign user file, now remember that's our text that we're using, and that user file, or the text of that file, is going to be text.csv. Now if we look in our program files over here, here there you can see I've got text.csv and if you look at the icon there it's actually a Microsoft Excel comma separated value. It's a Microsoft Excel CSV file um, and it's just the easiest file type to read. Um, okay so next one here system.rewrite. Now rewrite will allow us to delete all of the contents of the file and rewrite them with what it is that we're putting in here. Okay so if you want to append you're going to have to use something else. Add row that's initially set to Y, however what we are doing here is we're using a repeat until rather than a while loop. And the reason we want to do that is because we always want to run the code once. And the difference between a repeat until and a while loop is the repeat until will run the code at least once and then test for the condition. Whereas a while loop will test for the condition first. If it's not met then we don't run it at all. Okay so what we have here is we're going to enter into field 1 we're going to read line, we're going to enter field 2, read line again, and then text line will concatenate those two variables and put a comma in between them. So we essentially we are doing some string manipulation there to make sure that all of our commas are in between our fields. Uh, because we've only got field 1 and field 2, uh, we are only creating two columns. Okay, so after that we write line, so you should be really familiar with write line already. Uh, we're write lining into user file, which is our CSV file, which we've used above there, so you can see up here, text.csv, and we're writing text line into user file. Okay, after that we are going to then write line, do you want to add another one? Read line, add row. If down here we put a Y, it will repeat. Now there's not an awful lot of validation in here, mainly because it's just a test program just to see if it works. Now if add row does not equal a capital Y, it will then break out. Um, we've got here, well, essentially if we want to re uh, rerun this, we could add in banana. It doesn't make any difference because we're looking for a Y to run this. Okay. So after that we close the file. Now this is incredibly important for uh, using files. If you open them, you do something with them and you don't close it, when you try and open the file again, your program is going to crash. So you have to remember, open, do something with it and then always close the file. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run the program and show you how this works. Okay, let's move that so you can see it. There we go, so if enter field 1, there it is there, let's put that in, enter field 2, there's the code for that, and then add another yes or no, there we go, let's say no, and then you can see it actually gives us some output, now that's the second part, um, and that's the reading part, so I'll show you that in just a second. So we've closed our file, let's close that down. Um, and let's actually open up this text file here just to see what we've just created. Now again, as I said, this will overwrite anything that was already there previously. And there you go, there's the two fields 
that we've just written and because they had a comma between them it's put them into field one and field two. Okay so when you are then reading from a file it's really important to remember that what you are creating is going to be in this Excel spreadsheet format so you're always thinking about this sort of workbook style this is the structure of your CSV file. Now if you didn't have this created already what the code will do is it will go look for text.csv. If it doesn't exist, it will actually create it for you. And you can see I've just closed down text.csv because if we try and run this again and I have it already open, um, it is going to crash. OK, so this second part of the application, we go back up here, our variables are f, which is a file of char. Now, we use that to work out the size of the file. Um, so file of char basically allows us to count the number of characters in a file. And we've called that f. Read char allows us to read a single character because what we're going to have to do for our CSV files, we're going to have to read this character by character rather than line by line. Um, now the next one is rec, which is an array of string. Rec is going to hold a manipulated string, so it's going to have taken out all of the commas, and rec will hold each of the words within the entire file. I and J, now they are steppers, um, so they allow us to run through our loops um, and work out how many times we've run through them. Uh, we might, may also know them as counters. Uh, now len is basically going to hold the length of this file up here. So file of char is going to hold the length of the number of characters within our file. The reason I've given it um, as a long int is because for longer files we may well have um, more characters than a standard integer can hold. Okay, so let's go back to our code. Now this is this is done in two separate ways. The first one we do is we have come up here and we go system.assign and we assign f, which if you remember is our file of char, um, and we still use text.csv and we use system.reset. Now if you remember above, um, when we were writing, we did system.rewrite. So reset allows us to read uh, read our file. Now I'm aware that uh, system.read would probably be easier, uh, but we have to work with what we've got. So what we're doing is we're going to read, or reset, f, um, and then len, which you remember was our length of the file, uses file size. Now file size is a built-in function which will take a file of char or a file of string um, and it will find out how many characters in a file of char that it has. Um, so therefore leng will hold the number of characters in our file and exactly the same as we did above, we've done something with it and now we close the file. So we close f. Uh, now the reason we don't use that file of char when we want to then read is because you can't actually use read line write line with a file of char. So we have to go back to our text um, which was the user file, which we used when we were writing to it. Uh, so system.assign, exactly the same thing. I want to use user file, and that user file is text.csv. Uh, so again, get the text from text.csv. System.reset, because I want to read, so I'm reading user file. I and J initially are assigned to 1. These are our stepper variables, and I'll explain those in just a second, or counters. Um, and then what we do is we read the first part of the file. Now again we've got another repeat until down here because I always want to run at least one line of this character, or sorry, one, one iteration of this loop. Um, then I want to test to see if we're at the end of the file and if we're not, keep going. Okay, so up here we've got while read char, so read char being just the one, is not a comma. So while it's not a comma, it has to be data. Okay, now j is going to be the less than the length of the file. So j essentially is our stepper variable, which will work out if we have reached the end of the file. Now if you remember back in the 2014 pre-release, when we looked for the end of the file um, of our text file, it uses the word EOF, or end of file. Um, that's built into a text file, but it's not built into a CSV file. So we have to use these variables to work out if we've reached the end. So j is going to step through each of the characters. Now i is going to be slightly different. Now i only increments if we find a comma. And a comma says we have reached the end of this particular piece of data. So if we've reached the end of that particular field, we find the comma, we increment i, which is down here. 
we increment j because we've already reached another character but if j hasn't reached the, the length what we have here we go back up to our while loop and we read the next set of data now if we've reached a comma what that signifies to us is there's probably another piece or another field of data after it it's very very unlikely that we're going to find a comma and then nothing after it which is why we need to have this repeat until now the reason we have a while loop here is because it will go all the way through um, each piece of data. Now each piece of data doesn't necessarily have to be a character, it could be a word um, and it is more likely to be a word and you saw that in the first example when I ran it first time. Okay, at the end, when we've reached the end of the file, we have to remember to close it. We've done what we needed to do with it, we've put it into a variable within our program and we've closed it. Now here, what we have is, this is just me writing it out to, uh, to the screen. So for j equals 1. Now I've assigned 1 to j at this point because j is no longer usable, it's, uh, it's been done with. Uh, but I can then reuse that particular piece of memory um, as my next step of variable. Um, but i now holds the number of items that we found. So for j equals 1 to i, so j is now our step of variable right line j, so write the item that you have found at position j in our array um, and then read line, we'll just keep that program open until we ask it to close rather than doing it, putting it out to the screen and closing it before we've got time to read it. So let's run that one more time. Okay, so let's enter some more data. Okay, so there's our first line of data. Now, do we want to add a rec another record? Let's add one more so that we can actually see what happens when we've got more than one record of data or more than one row. Okay. So there's some more. We've got some capitalization in there. That shouldn't make any difference. Okay, let's not add any more. And you can see there i is going to have a value of 4 because we have 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have 4 data items and right line for each one would have put them out like this. OK. And just to make absolutely doubly sure, let's open up our CSV file. And there you go, four items of data written into what appears to be an Excel spreadsheet, but is actually a CSV file. OK, so that was reading and writing CSV files in Pascal. If you want some more information, you can go to www.mrsbillinghurst.net where there's lots more information on Comp1, um, or you can follow me on Twitter at sgs underscore computing. Thanks very much.